Hi folks, welcome to the Prepared Homestead. This is Travis. Thank you all for stopping by to watch. Yeah, it's it's raining outside. We're finally getting a, a good bit of rain again. Uh, it's been raining since pretty early this morning. Uh, a little bit of thunderstorms mixed in with it, but mostly it's just a a good steady rain, that, a good soaking rain, you know, not too heavy where it washes away. Uh, so overall, it's it's a good thing. Gardens, creeks, ponds, all that kind of stuff are really going to like it. Uh, it's a subject I talk about frequently, but uh, we need to bring it up ever so often to remind ourselves of what's going on. Because if you rely on mainstream media and even sometimes social media, um, they, they forget about this because the attention span is so short. Um, if, if there's not something really big happening... Well, then they forget. And there's a lot of big things happening at the southern border. Tens of thousands of people a day are coming across it illegally. Millions and millions of people have come into this country illegally. And there's more and more evidence indicating that most, or at least many, of these that are coming across the border uh, into this country are not just poor people that are just coming here for a better way of life. There's a lot of these people that are coming across with very nefarious atten intentions. And what that means for us, I mean, obvious increased crime, um, a, a drain on our social systems, but also the ever increased possibility of things like terrorist attacks or widespread uh, conflict where it's very, very possible. I'm not saying it is going to happen. I'm saying it's becoming very possible that hundreds of thousands of these that's coming across the border are here as basically an infiltrating army. And we have to be aware of that and and be continually planning because as I've said many times before, this is probably the biggest, most important thing that is happening of our time uh, is that our country is being overrun uh, by people from all over the world. Many of them do not have America's best interest at heart. Uh, so I wanted to start talking about that again. I uh, wanted to mention that the meeting for this month uh, in May is the 26th, and we will be having that. So please plan on attending 26th of May. Same time, same place. Uh, meeting starts officially at 2, but we open the doors around noon, uh, 11 or noon, something like that. So people can come early and, and mingle and, and network and get to know each other and build community. So please plan on attending if you're able to. Also, I will uh, leave a link in the description and comment section below. Uh, we're still working on that fire station. Uh, I'll, I'll give an update uh, here soon, but we've, we're still working on it. And and we, if, if you're able to, I don't want to make you feel guilty or anything, because many of you have helped. A lot of you have helped. And that's been, um, it, it's, it's done so much to, to get us much further down the road, but we still need a little bit of help. And so if any of you uh, feel it in your heart to donate to help the cause of rebuilding this old fire station so we can better provide um, all sorts of medical services and fire service and, and other things to this very rural community, there'll be a link down there below where you can donate to the campaign. So um, this is not necessarily brand new news, right? This is happening all the time. But um, it's it's not been talked about. I saw something in the news yesterday that that Joe Biden is proposing that uh, on a daily basis, that after we reach 4,000 people that day, that they shut the border down. So they will allow 4,000 people a day to come into this country illegally. And then after that, they shut the border down and no more people can come across. Well, <clears throat> We were told that they can't shut the border down. He doesn't have the authority to shut the border down. That that it's not a, a logistic possibility to shut the border down. So um, how are they going to shut it down after 4,000 people? That, that's just, just a question. It, it's, I mean, if you can shut it down after 4,000, why, why that number? Why not 400? Why not four? Why not zero? Doesn't make much sense. Uh, there was also a bill that passed the House yesterday. Um that would require a detainment and deportation of any illegal that attacks a police officer. Um, interesting enough, most of the Democrats voted against that. Um, that. That's not surprising, but just wanted to 
throw that out there so that you know where their allegiances lie. The numbers are the hard part. Uh, officially, they're saying somewhere between 7 and 10 million have come across the border. That's what the government says since Biden has been in office. But there are more and more sources that are putting that number anywhere between 25 and 50 million people. In fact, some of the latest numbers are indicating that as much as 16% of the American population right now is are illegal aliens. Um, six to 900,000 potentially Chinese have come across the border and the vast majority of them are, as many of you know, military aged Chinese males. We're watching crime increase dramatically. Uh, we're watching just the degradation, degeneracy of, of our society happen more regularly. I think that some people, and some of you watching may fall into this category, don't notice it or think about it as much because it may not be happening necessarily in your area. And that's the thing. It's, it's widespread, but it's not everywhere, everywhere. There are still communities and towns and stuff in, in the United States that, that aren't really feeling much of an impact of this. They're not seeing it on a daily basis. And you know how we are as people. If we don't see it, then we forget about it. And I want to remind you, those that fall into that category, that this is happening every day. Just because it's not being reported every day. It is absolutely happening every day. More and more are coming across and I firmly believe that more and more of these people that are coming across aren't here for good intents. I'm, I'm going to show you this video here. And, and honestly, I think I can just, for the most part, show the video and you can kind of come up with your own uh, opinions of it. But it's a, it's a video at the border. Uh, it is some Syrian men that are coming across the border. And this guy is just asking them, you know, where are you from? What's your name? What are you here for? I want you to pay attention to a few things. How are they dressed? What they're wearing? What they look like? I mean, think about this. That We're, we're told that uh, these people travel thousands and thousands of miles on foot through jungles and deserts to get there. Do they look like they've been walking that long, traveling like that? Notice their, their facial expressions, their smile. Their eyes look, does it look like someone that you would trust? I just, I, I mean, I'm not trying to lead you into thinking one way or the other. I just, I'm just proposing some questions. Go ahead and watch this video and we'll get back and, and see what you think. Where are you from? Syria. Syria? Syria. Ah, what's your name? Milad. Milad? Why did you come to the U.S.? Uh, why coming to U.S.? No? No English. Okay. Where are you from? From Syria. Syria? English? So so. Why are you coming to the US? Why come? Because we uh, we love America and uh, we need uh, a nice style, a nice life. Yeah, coming uh, for jobs? Yeah, a nice job, a nice... Uh, because uh, our country uh, uh, very wears. What's your name? Danny. Danny. Good luck. Thank you. Where are you from? Ahmed. Syria. Syria, too? What's your name? Ahmed. Ahmed? Ahmed. Uh, same question, why do you come to the U.S.? All of you, or Arab, no. Where are you from? All right, well, well, what do you think about that? I mean, do these guys look like they're trustworthy? Do they, they, they look like they're, that they're honestly here to just be good Americans? I mean, Syria is known for having a lot of problems. And these guys are healthy looking, they're dressed nice, uh, wearing 5'11 clothing, which is not the first time we've seen that. I, I, I would like to figure out why that is. We, there has been multiple pictures and videos of people that are coming across the border wearing 5'11 clothing. And, um, is 5'11 donating that stuff? Uh, I have a couple. I, is, I don't think this hat. No. I I do have a I have a couple hats. And woo, look at that hair. Uh, 
<clears throat> hat hair day. Um, I have a few things, but I don't have a lot. Um, 511 typically markets their, their, their clothing to law enforcement, military, and outdoorsmen. I'd like to know why so many people are wearing 511 clothing. Anyways, it's not cheap stuff. Just, I don't know. I wanted to share that video because, <clears throat> you know, they, they just, oh, no, we're, we're here because we want a better life in America. You know, that kind of thing. This is the kind of people that are really pouring across the country. Uh, people from African nations, Middle Eastern nations, yes, south of the border, uh, China, several places. In fact, um, I saw a report not that long ago that out of all the people coming across the border, uh, Mexico is not the, the dominant nation. It's not even the majority even more, anymore. Uh, so it's you can't just say it's a bunch of bunch of Mexicans coming across the border or a bunch of Hispanics coming across the border because that's not necessarily the case either. This is a problem that I, I personally don't believe can be fixed through legal or political means. Uh, I know that Donald Trump is campaigning right now that if he gets elected into office, he's going to deport every one of them. Um, I don't number number one. I, I don't believe that they would. I don't believe that they have the. I, I just don't believe it would happen. But even if they tried, I don't see the logistic possibilities of making that happen. You know, if we're even if we're on the low end of the ten million in this country, that's still a lot. And if we're talking twenty five to fifty million, I don't even see how that's possible. I mean, there, there's just not the manpower. So to not trying not to sound all Debbie Downer about it. Um, I think we're here for this for, for a while. You know, I spoke the other day about this and was talking about how the United Nations, uh, for several years now, going back several years, has been pushing this, this agenda of basically replacing the populations of the West, of the Northern Hemisphere, with people from the Southern Hemispheres. Uh, you know, African nations, Middle Eastern nations, Hispanic nations, of, of putting them into Europe and to North America. And we're seeing that. Canada is flooded with them. Uh, all over Europe, you've, you've seen probably multiple videos and reports of all the things. They're, they're ahead of us. It, it's happened there long enough that, that it's really starting to, to cause things to fall apart. The, the degeneracy in the streets is awful. The violence the violence against women, many of these, these European countries that, ha that have traditionally had very low crime rates are now experiencing explosions in crimes. Things like, you know, violent assault, rape, things like that are just, uh, they're, they're off the charts. Interesting enough is some of the countries that these people are coming from, their crime rates are dropping. Hmm. Their crime rates are dropping. I don't believe it's simply because that there's people leaving these countries coming to our countries. I believe it's the type of people that they're sending their worst. They're sending their criminal, their gang members. And that's what we're getting. That's what Europe's getting. That's what Canada's getting. That's what the United States is getting. I've, I've seen reports in, in other countries, uh, Australia, New Zealand, um, all over. This isn't just happening in the United States, but it, it, it's happening to us most definitely. And we can see where this is headed. Like I said, take a look at Europe. You want to know where this is headed? Look at Europe. Again, I, I don't have a solution for this, at least not a legal political solution. Okay. I just, I don't, I think it's, it's too far gone. I may be wrong. I hope, I wish I was wrong and I hope that I'm wrong, but I think that we're too far gone. Too many people here for this to be handled legally. Could some be deported? Yeah, sure, absolutely. But could it all be deported and, and, and fixed and put us back to the way we were? No, I don't think that's gonna happen. So what do you and I need to do for about it? Well, we need to get ready. And you need to be stocking up. Yes, you need to be self-sufficient. Um, I could easily see that based on what we're seeing in Europe, that a lot of places in the United States could get to the point that it's too dangerous for you to venture out in the public. You, know, you want to be able to stay home. 
So you need to be self-sufficient. You need to be stocked up. You need to be able to stay home. It maybe maybe it's it's too dangerous to go down to the to the local hospital ER because there's so much violent crime down there. So, you know, you should probably be able to handle certain medical things on your own. That kind of stuff. But you also need to prepare a very robust and active defense plan. Um, you should be stocking up <laughs> every time. Every time I watch one of these videos, every time I, I see the reports of how bad it actually is getting, my, my immediate thought is, is usually, I probably should, should order some more ammo. I should probably buy some more ammo. Yeah, that, that's, that's probably a good idea. Um, I would suggest that. I mean, I know some of you have a lot, but um, yeah, you should probably be stocking up on ammo. You probably should have some, some boomsticks too you probably should be going out on a regular basis and learning how to use them proficiently and not just standing and shooting at a paper target. If you've seen any of these videos from Europe and other places of these violent acts, and many times it does involve firearms, even in places where guns are illegal or very controlled, they're not just standing there shooting at a paper target. It's, it's chaotic, it's crazy, and so you should train accordingly. Remember that a lot of people, a lot of these people, they hate us. They hate you and I. They want, they want our property. They want our things. They want our lives. And we should train accordingly. You need to be stocking up and preparing for this. This is that, this is that elephant in the room. This is that dark horse that's coming at us. And it, it's, it's, it's every day. And it's building. And there may be one particular central breaking point that will happen where things fall apart or most likely will just be a continual, constant breaking down of society, increasing of violence, more people coming across the border, more drain and strain on our system. That's probably the most likely scenario to where it's t you wake up one day and you realize, oh my goodness, we've become... We've become Sweden, we've become Germany, we've become France, or even worse. I would strongly and highly suggest that you start getting your houses in order very promptly and put a lot of energy and effort into it. You need to be preparing yourselves mentally, physically, and spiritually. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.